it. We need cooks. We need the whole... Actually, you as a village can be guest editor of the one show. You can decide what goes into the programme. So do get your pictures to us as quick as you can. Absolutely. Um, now, Sean, as Matt touched on at the beginning of the show, I think it's fair to say that as a nation, we were all shocked over the weekend um, to discover that you'd been diagnosed with breast cancer back in 2014. And of course, nobody knew about it. Yeah. It's all in this book, which we'll talk about. H how are you feeling now? Where are you now then in the process? Uh, I was diagnosed at the end of December mm. 2014, so just before Christmas. And then I had a double mastectomy for the cancer in January mm -hmm. of 2015, and then subsequent surgeries. But um, I was very lucky, very lucky, because I was told from the beginning that while it was breast-threatening, it wasn't life-threatening. And I've lost right. my aunt. I mean, many of us have lost people we love to cancer, haven't we? Mm. I lost my aunt to breast cancer. Mm. My mum died of cancer. One of my best friends died of breast cancer. Mm. And about 56,000 people were diagnosed in the same year as I was of the same disease. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I feel so grateful, actually, that I am here. Mm. And um, I'm well. I've had a, my last three month check was clear, Good. which is fabulous. Yeah. And uh, I, I feel I feel very positive. Mm. Yeah, I mean, there's a bit more surgery, but inevitably, you know, these these and uh, you always popping back into hospital because mm. of, things happen and a few more lumps and bumps that you worry about, and there's always a risk of the the cancer returning. But you've got to live with that risk. You know, mm. one of the things yeah. I've learned over the past year is you've you've got to live with some degree of uncertainty. Yes, and you can't worry about it all the time because that would just drive you mad. Mm. What what you need to do is just be thankful and positive. And actually, I'm in a much better position now because of what I've learned over the past year. If it does come back, I know what sort of tips and tools and strategies mm. and coping mechanisms I can use to, to, to deal with it. And is it because of what you've learned that you wanted to go public with this? Because you kept it to yourself and, you know, your family decided to keep it to yourselves for, for a very long time. So when and why did you decide to put it out there? Well... I thought I knew all about how to deal with trauma because I've done a, a science master's in psychology mm -hmm. and I knew a bit about trauma from assessing other people and and I thought I'm okay physically I seem to be hitting all the targets mm -hmm. physically sometimes you slip back but emotionally I didn't seem to be progressing as fast as I hoped and I thought oh, well I'm failing mm -hmm. I'm just not doing it properly look at all these people who are who are coping and I'm why aren't I coping so it, I just thought well I think what well, what I wanted to do was develop a psychological first aid kit for, for me, but also for anyone who's going through something really difficult and challenging. So the people I talked to for the book have gone through all sorts of different losses, you know, the loss of their health or of someone they love or even the loss of their mind, you know, if they have mental health problems. Mm. And that's all about a loss of control. All of a sudden, the life that we thought was stable and all the assumptions we had about it are shattered and we've got to reconfigure it in some way. And a psychologist told me it's like a, a vase which shatters on the floor and you either piece it back together, in which case it looks a bit wonky and it's never going to be the same, or you make something different out of the pieces and you can still make something beautiful out of the pieces, mm -hmm. like a mosaic or a picture frame or, you know, that's what, what analogy, you've got to think yeah. about. Yes. That's, and, and so what I wanted to do was to know how to do it well and to help other people, whatever difficulty they're going through, to to know, to, to just, they might not take any of the strategies, but some of the tips and tools might be useful. And mm. somebody said to me, I wouldn't be here without all the outstretched hands. And that's what we need. And we need to know where they are. And, and this book is about saying, these are the outstretched hands. This is what you can mm -hmm. do mm -hmm. to, to help yourself through trauma. Mm. So when the next thing comes along, which inevitably it will, to all of us, you'll be that more, yeah, better, better yeah. equipped to do. Better and the, one, of the, one of the things that you're interested in, and you've got a documentary actually on Radio 4 tomorrow, haven't you, is brain resilience. Mm. And why some people cope better with trauma than others. And actually, is it something we can train our brain to do? So where do you stand on that, Sean? Well, I thought what was, inter what was interesting is whether there are some people who are more resilient because they're just built like that. It's in their DNA, you know, they're, they're, they've got all the right genes to be resilient mm -hmm. or whether we can influence it ourselves. So I spoke to a neuroscientist who said up to 50% of how we react to difficult things is in our genes. But it's such a complex interplay of that lots much. of different... Yeah, 
But it is lots and lots of different. And he has identified resilience gene markers. So a DNA test that you can take. And I have had that DNA test in my bag thinking, do I want to? Do I want to take it? Do I want to know? Because if you have that gene, you are less sensitive to the negative things in life, but you're also less sensitive to the positive things in life. Yeah. yeah. And actually, another thing I've learned is it's not, it's, it's not a bad thing being sensitive. It's not a bad thing being no. vulnerable. And in actual fact, if there is a strength in that vulnerability. Mm -hmm. You just need to know what to how listen to, work to with within it. that. Exactly. Yeah. And yes. another thing I learned, which was really interesting, is how children are being taught skills in how to manage their own emotions. Mm. And with so many mental health issues at the moment amongst teens, I thought that was a really interesting thing that maybe Definitely. the next generation will be able to manage their emotions and really challenge their thinking. What's the yeah. evidence for me feeling frightened and anxious and, oh, okay, use those therapies to help yeah. them. And all of this is on the Radio 4 doc tomorrow. Yeah. And also Shan's book, Rise, is out on Thursday. Brilliant. Thank you. Uh, listen, if you have been affected by uh, any of the things that we've been discussing here, then there's some information up on our website for you. Now, in many parts sure. of the country, it hasn't exactly been sunbathing weather, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't go down to the beach. Uh, here is Miranda with a whole host of wildlife that you could see if you look between your toes.